Hey guys, I'm P-Freak. Welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red. Last time we made it to the Pewter City Gym and we fought Brock there and then we made it out here to Route 3, I think this is. Pretty sure this is Route 3. I'm gonna double check real quick to see I'm wrong, if I'm wrong or not. Okay, technically yes, we made it to Route 3, but we're at the beginning of Route 4, it looks like. And this part, we're going to go into the so-called Mount Moon gonna be your second dungeon of the area, and this one's a hell of a lot more annoying. Everyone hates caves in Pokemon. Everyone does. At least every Pokemon fan does. Which is why we have a special item called, where is it? The Repel. I bought some more because I fought some of those trainers on Route 3, and I also got Bun Bun to level up a bit. Bun Bun did learn Focus Energy, I don't know if I showed that, but he did learn Focus Energy. So there's that. But anyways, the reason why everyone... Ooh, Bullet Seed. Interesting. The reason why most people, if not everyone... So Paralyze Heal, nice. Hates this is because... In, unlike Viridian Forest, you were not a required trainer, but whatever. Unlike Viridian Forest, every step here is a chance for a wild encounter. And there is one Pokemon cry that everyone hates because of this. And that's freaking Zubat. Everyone hates Zubats so much. Now granted, I've played with Crobats before and they're not that bad. It's just there are probably some better flying types out there. Definitely not Pidgey though. <laughs> uh, actually technically Crobat wasn't in... Yeah, no, Crobat technically cannot go in this game. That's a fun little mechanic they put in here for some god awful reason. So between the first generation and the second generation, some first generation Pokemon got evolutions. Um, for example, Golbat, the evolution of Zubat, got a new evolution in the second generation, Crobat. However, for some god awful reason, they thought it was a good idea to get rid of Crobat, meaning, like, if your Golbat tries to evolve, it refuses, like, automatically just refuses to evolve. It's weird, and Harden's gonna be difficult to deal with Peck unless we get crits, so. Anyways, I'll see you. I'll be right back. Alright, Bun Bun grew to level 12 and learned Double Kick. Nice. That'll definitely help, especially with this area, since we'll be encountering mostly hikers and rock-type users. Um, so yeah, I just find that weird that they don't even try to implement the evolutions that are clearly there for the Pokémon. They just flat-out block you from even trying. It's just, it's a weird decision. Thankfully, they fixed that. Hello, who the hell are you? They fixed that in the next remake where instead they actually implemented the Pokemon into the, the remix Pokedex. Uh, right, never got to put a repel on. Oh, well, there's one Poke. There's a bad, by the way. There's one Pokemon I want to get here, not for using in our party. There's, besides maybe Zubat and Golbat. There isn't really any good Pokemon here, except actually, the Pokemon Clefairy appears in this area. Fun fact about Clefairy, Clefairy was originally supposed to be the mascot, but it's, for some reason Game Freak decided Pikachu was better. Which, eh, I don't know, I think I don't like both of them. So, that's interesting. Clefairy's known as the Moon Pokemon, or something like that where basically its whole story revolves around moons and all that. Bun Bun getting another level. So while I was fighting that guy, I did remember that um, after we go through this area, we won't be able to revisit visit it for a while. So I'm probably going to go back um, before we actually fully finish this area. Like, we're going to get to the next town by the end of this part. No worries about that. But before we actually leave the area to the point of no return, I'm probably going to go back and fight all the trainers. Eh, repels. Thankfully, they do get a nice quality of life up, like quality of life change in the later generations. I believe starting in the second games of Generation 5, you're, you don't have to keep going into the bag to actually start your repel. Anyways, the rare candy we just picked up is a special little item. It increases your Pokemon's level by one. What it basically does is that it takes all the experience your Pokemon needs left to level up and gives the Pokemon that experience. 
meaning that you don't want to use it when you're like really close to a level up. You want to use it when your Pokemon just freshly leveled up. And you want to use it much later in the story because then you'll get even more experience than if you just used it right away. You should probably see what's down here. Mount Moon, it can be a confusing maze at times. I guess we'll figure out what, who these guys are later. And TM46 Thief is a dark type move that deals damage and it will steal the opposing Pokemon's item if the user is not holding an item. Ether that heals up power points for moves and the escape rope helps us escape from dungeons, at least most dungeons. I don't know if it helps us escape Viridian Forest or dungeons like that. Probably not. Let's see. Okay, we got a hiker. The hiker's kind of a spinner. And over here, if I remember correctly, yes, a moonstone. These were mentioned earlier back in the museum. They are evolutionary items. Or moonstone. There are different types of evolution stones. Moonstones, thunderstones, firestones, waterstones, leaf stones, and then some more that were added later on. The moonstone is actually going to become very important to us. If you don't know what I mean, you will see. I guarantee you. Fun fact, Clefairy actually evolves via a moonstone. You just give it to Clefairy and it evolves into its fully evolved form, Clefable. Now the issue with stone evolutions, at least most of them, is that the Pokemon... I might have mentioned this earlier, but sometimes base Pokemon learn moves that the evolutions do not. This is especially apparent in stone evolutions. Stone evolutions tend to not learn very many moves after they evolve. So just keep that in mind when you plan on evolving a Pokemon. And we are running out of repels really quickly. So, I guess, oh, this must be your first required guy of this. We, Team Rocket, shall find fossils. Reviving Pokemon from them will earn us huge riches. Will they now, huh? Will they? Alright. Team Rocket. I guess that's the evil team of this area. Every generation has an evil team. They have Team Rocket, and then there's also like Team Magma and Aqua and other games, so on and so forth. <sighs> like, if you watched Sword and Shield, my Sword and Shield Let's Play, you would know the weird evil team that was there. It really shouldn't be an evil team, but this goes back to the original evil team formula, where these guys are actually a decent evil team. At least in red, blue, fire, and leaf green. I don't think they're that great in yellow, personally, but still, they're like actually what you kind of expect an evil team to be. They're basically the Mafia. Okay, I think Bun Bun is up to level now, so we need to get Rhett up now. Which Rhett will make quick work of the Zubat. Zubat is a flying poison type, and flying types are weak to electric types. And that's how Pokemon works, basically. Just focus on the type advantages, and boom, you win. And it did not one shot. God damn it, Rhett. Why must you do this to me? I did get paralyzed, though, by Rhett's ability. You may have, I don't know if one of the other Pokemon got poisoned, if I ever showed that, but um, in the third generation, a new mechanic called abilities were added, where they're passive abilities that that will have different effects. For Pikachu, it has the ability static, where if it's hit with a contact move, then the Pokemon has a chance, the attacking Pokemon has a chance of being paralyzed. For Bun Bun, Bun Bun has poison point, where it's the same thing, except with uh, poison instead of paralysis. Anyways, you don't look like Team Rocky guy. Hey, stop. I found these fossils. They're both mine. I mean, I don't want them. I just want you to move them out of our, my way, please. Uh, I guess we have to fight Super Nerd Miguel. And he has a Grimer. Interesting. You don't get to see Grimers in the wild for quite a while, so... It's interesting to see Pokemon like this so early on. Now, of course, if I wanted to, I could use Thunder Wave to just slow it down, but... I think we're fine with Thundershock, and I bought a few potions, so... We actually don't... God dang it. We actually don't have anything that's super effective to Grimer yet. We will eventually, but not yet. Of course, you disable my special attack, and then you use Heart to make my quick attacks weaker. Well, this is going just wonderfully. Alright. That's really badly worded nowadays. Rhett is disabled. Ugh. 
All right, nice bit of experience. Trade battles do give you more experience than wild battles. Next up is coughing poison types. Uh. Now, unfortunately, even if we did have a ground type here to fight coughing, coughing has the ability to levitate, which means that ground type moves do not affect it whatsoever, unless it gets grounded somehow, which I don't know if there's any way for you to ground a Pokemon in this generation. I know in, like, later generations there are moves that enable a Pokemon to get grounded, but... Well, I don't know. When was Roost um, introduced? I think Roost was at least introduced by Generation 2. Roost heals um, Pokemon, and also, if they're a flying type, which most Roost users are, they lose that flying type for the turn that they're Roosted. There we go. And Crash got poisoned. I gotta cure that. Thankfully, um, Crash does not lose health if it's in the party during a battle. Unlike if it's outside the battle, and so on. Uh, you know what? We're gonna return Crash here. God, we are all so weak. And we are gonna quickly... I'm sending Red out here because electric types are resistant to other electric type moves. So why did I use Thundershock if that was the case? Eh, whatever. So, Charge. Charge is an interesting move. It supposedly increases the damage of the next, um the next electric attack, I think. But then also, like, is it? Well, clearly it didn't happen here. They must have just added it in the fourth generation, where it also raises your special defense, I think. Alright, come on. Okay, just wasting more time with charge. Awesome. You're not even using an electric attack on us. Hopefully his quick attack should KO it. Nope. Uh, for quick attacks priority. Voltorb's actually Voltorb's evolution is it the fastest Pokemon in the game, I'm pretty sure. At least generation one Pokemon. At least shake a fossil. No being greedy. So, like he says, we can only grab one of these fossils. We have either the dome fossil or I'm gonna heal up uh I'm gonna heal up Crash real quick. Yeah yeah we don't need a cutscene for that. Or we have Lord Helix himself. Of course we're going to take Lord Helix. Are you crazy? I don't want to get damned. All right, then this fossil is mine. So yeah, unfortunately you can't get the other fossil. You're going to have to trade it with someone else if you really want it. All right, let's heal up the party real quick. All right, I probably should have brought more supplies with me when I came in here, but I'm, you only get so much money so early on. I think this leads us, yeah, it leads us directly out of Mount Moon, so technically that healing may not have entirely been needed, but like I said, I am going to probably jump back to, um, back into the mountain to actually fight all the trainers, because like I said, with these ledges, Roar, not bad, ledges, there's a point of no return if we go all the way over here. What Roar does is basically, it roars at the opponent and it forces them to switch out. Or if it's a wild Pokemon battle, it instantly ends the wild battle. This can also be used by AI, so good luck with that. These guys! A punch of Roaring Ferocity, packed with destructive power. When chips are down, Mega Punch is the ultimate attack. You agree, yes? Now, let me teach your Pokemon. These guys teach you... Hmm. Okay. These guys teach you either Mega Punch or Mega Kick. Let's see, can I think? They're both really strong moves. If I remember correctly, Mega Punch has really low accuracy, though. Unfortunately, Poke, someone who has physical attack and is actually going to be using physical attacks cannot learn this quite yet. But anyways, I'll be right back. Oh, wow. We actually ran into a Clefairy. Clefairies are kind of uncommon around here. Now, granted, I think on the bottommost floor, which is the floor we're on, you can find them the most commonly, but... Uh, sing. You can find them the most commonly here, but they're still pretty rare. Sing um, sends your Pokemon to sleep, and it does no damage. It sends them to sleep, but it has a really low accuracy, and sleep is still very low. Okay, here's actually a Pokemon I mentioned earlier that I wanted to grab. Now, of course, we're not going to be using Paris for our actual team, though. 
There's just a very specific reason that I want to grab a Paris for. If anyone has played a Pokemon game before Generation 7, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Thankfully it got paralyzed, so this should be easier. Paris is known to be one of the weakest Pokemon, at least in my opinion, but it does have an interesting little piece of trivia. It's actually based on how bug how spores, sorry. How certain spores take over God damn it. Can take over a bug. Like sort of like zombify them. Where they control the bug's movement and all that stuff. And its actions. It's kinda creepy. Alright, during my time while I was trying to fight all those trainers in Mount Moon, Crash leveled up to level 16, and we get to experience our first Pokemon Evolution. This is pretty standard to have your starter evolve first, typically, unless you get like a bug type. But congratulations, your Crash evolved into a Wartwirl. Now Crash has stronger stats, has a different form entirely, and yeah. Basically, that's it. And it has technically a different learn set. Like, usually in these early games, um, evolved Pokemon learn moves later than they typically the base forms do. Anyways, back to battling. P p back to battling. And once again, Bun Bun has hit level 16 and is evolving, being our second evolution. As long as I don't press any other buttons. Because I was just spamming it there for some reason. And the A button's really close to the B button. And our Bun Bun has evolved into a Nido Reno. Thankfully, it's not the same name as the evolution of the female Nidorans. Thank God. Alright, now that we've got all that taken care of, we can finally move on. Now, some of you may know, but in case you don't know, Nidorino and Nidorina, the evolution of female Nidorina, Nidorans, they evolve via Moonstone, and we did obtain one back in Mount Moon. However, as I also mentioned before, certain stone evolutions are not able to get certain moves if they evolve immediately. So, unfortunately, we're not going to be evolving Nidorino until we get a certain move. But, welcome all to Cerulean City, and in case you haven't caught on already, the names of these towns are all based on different colors. This was most apparent in Pokemon Yellow, where if you played it on a Game Boy Color, they would all be their different colors. We have Cerulean, which is a shade of blue, Pewter, which is a shade of gray, Viridian, which I think is a shade of green, if I remember correctly, and then we have... Oh no, Viridian's right here. I'm dumb. And then we have Palette, as in a paint palette. This, continue on, this continues on throughout the rest of the towns as well. Not something you really recognize when you're a kid, but definitely something a nice little piece of trivia you realize when you're an adult. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go heal up everyone real quick. Oh yeah, I should also quickly show you what, how our team's looking so far. Crash is at level 17, Bun Bun at 16, Red at 16. Red also learned a new move in Double Team. Double Team is one of the most hated moves ever where it raises Pokemon's evasion. Basically, it's like lowering the accuracy of the opponent. It's really obnoxious. I wonder if any of these guys have anything interesting for us to hear. Alright, let's see. That Bill. I heard that you'll do whatever it takes to get rare Pokemon. He's not above doing all sorts of things I've heard. Bill, huh? Why don't you go upstairs and give try trading Pokemon with your friends? You can get a lot more variety by trading. Pokemon you get in trades quickly grow too. That's a good thing to bring up. If you trade Pokemon, trading is one of the main features of the Pokemon games, but if you trade Pokemon, they will gain increased experience in battles than if you caught them na than if you were the ones to catch them. Be careful though, because unless you have a certain amount of gym badges, they can disobey you automatically. Bill has lots of Pokemon. He collects rare ones too. This Bill guy seems to be very famous. It's the old man. Have you heard about Bill? You too? Everyone calls him Pokemon Maniac. I think people are just jealous of Bill though. Who wouldn't want to boast about the Pokemon? I don't know, old man. I don't know. Alright, I think there are a few other things we can do around here. Let's actually go to the Pokemart. Yeah, it's right over here. 
I spent most of my money over on repels, and I also sold the star piece that we got at some point. I didn't really pay attention or mention it, but the star piece is only made for selling. You sell it, you get 4,900 Poké Dollars. Uh, we can get Super Potions now, which heal 50 HP instead of 20. I'm probably gonna grab... I can only really afford three, so... I'll just grab one for now, in case it's like an emergency mid-battle. Uh... should probably grab more Pokeballs. Mm, I'll take three. I also grabbed a couple other uh, status healing things, and I think I'll spend the rest on repels. Yeah. Alright. Now, the city does have a gym, and we could do the gym right now if we wanted to. See, it's right here. But instead, I actually want to go north. There's something else we can take care of while we're around. Real quickly, I just want to check. Okay. And if we go up north, look who it is. Yo, Jordan, you're still struggling along back here? I'm doing great. I caught a bunch of strong po and smart Pokemon. Here, let me see what you caught, Jordan. It's this stickwad again, but a lot stronger. So this is technically our... Is it technically our second battle? Well, third if you count the one on the side, but... I don't know. He starts off with Pidgeotto, a rather strong Pidgeotto at level 17. Please note I have been battling all the trainers. But hopefully, Rhett should be able to take care of it. Hopefully. Pidgeotto is the evolution of Pidgey, and fun fact, in Pokemon Yellow, there was a 1% chance of you encountering a Pidgeotto in Viridian Forest. Not a Pidgey, but a Pidgeotto. Again, Pidgey and Pidgeotto, they're still not the best flying types, even if our rival uses it, but... Still a pretty common flying type. Alright, good. I was afraid that that accuracy loss was going to make Thundershock miss. Alright. Next up is Rattata. Alright, I'm actually going to switch Red out for Bun Bun, because Bun Bun has a fighting type move. Which Rattata is weak to. Jeez, all your Pokemon just like using Quick Attack. That's what you get for constantly using Quick Attack on me, jeez. I didn't even have to do anything. Alright. Hopefully, yeah. Easy one. One shot. Nice. Next up is. Abra! Okay, Abra would be scary if it wasn't, well, an Abra. Abra, its evolution is known to be one of the best Pokemon, especially within these early generations, because second types are just overpowered. The issue with that, though, is that Abra cannot learn any other move naturally besides Teleport. You could teach it HMs, and it can learn moves that way, but... Otherwise, it just doesn't do anything. If I remember correctly, its special attack is actually above 100 already. So... And uses crits again. So if you can get a special move, it's not that bad. And finally, we have Bulbasaur. You haven't evolved your your Bulbasaur yet. Wimp. You're calling me slow. I have a freaking War Turtle already, and a Nidorino. Now, granted, you do have a Pidgeot. Ah, uh, Leech Seed. It basically saps part of my HP at the end of every turn, and it heals up for a portion of the amount sapped. Or maybe it's all the amount sapped. Sleep power. Well, I learned from my Clefairy singing on me that I... Okay. I see how you're playing this game now. I see. Well. I am going to... I swear... Yeah, here we go. I bought a single awakening. Hopefully the sleep powder does not land again. And that's why I'm not sending out Crash right now, because... Bulbasaur does have a grass type move, and Crash would probably die rather quickly. Faint, whatever. I'm gonna say die instead of faint because that, let's be honest, that's what we all said. It's basically similar. To, you know what? Fine. I'm just gonna switch out to Ret. Hopefully, she'll be able to take care of everything. Because I am sick of this Leech Seed giving him free HP. Leech Seed, I believe, does get removed when you swap out. Actually, hmm. I guess I'll just go with Crash. Crash has more HP than Rhett right now. Who would have thought sleep was going to be the thing that's going to be pissing me off the most? Uh, Tackle's probably going to be better than Water Gun right now. 
God, are you serious right now? Am I seriously going to lose because of sleep powder? You know what? I might as well take this moment to actually use that super potion I bought but, on rent. But are we seriously going to lose because of sleep powder? And the sleep has been lasting... I thought it was random, but I think it lasts a full four turns. Which sucks. And sleep powder has low accuracy, so I don't know how Bulbasaur is landing it so easily. God, this is obnoxious. Alright, Rhett. Hopefully you can do something. Okay, he's not sleep powdering. Oh, God. Please KO, please KO, please KO. Oh, thank God. God, that was such a mess. But Bun Bun grew to level 17. Not bad, not bad. And we defeated Blue. Hey, take it easy. You won already. Shut up. You're the one who constantly used sleep hacks on us. Hey, guess what? I went to Bill's and got him to show me his rare Pokemon. That added a lot of pages to my Pokedex. After all, Bill's world famous is Pokemania. He made the Pokemon storage system on PC, too. Since you're using the system, you should go thank him. Well, I better get rolling. Smell you later. See ya, jackass. What do you want? Oh yeah, right. I feel sorry for you. No, really. You're always plotting behind me. So here, I'll give you a little present as a favor. I don't... What? I don't want your fucking present, buddy. A chatty gossip like you. That thing's person. I don't need it because I don't give a hoot about others. More reason to just hate him. Alright, this time I really am gone. Smell you later. God, why do most of the rivals they did back then just... God, why are they all assholes? Anyways, what he gave us, the Fame Checker. A device that enables you to recall what you've heard and seen about famous people. Uh, again, another thing I've never used before. So we have Oak, Daisy, which was Blue's sister, Brock, and Bill. After all, Bill's world famous po as Pokemon Me. I can invent the Pokemon storage system on PC too. It can be interesting. Bill's Lux Pokemon. He collects rare ones too. It can be useful, I guess, if this is your first ever Pokemon game, but this ain't my first rodeo kid, so I'm not I never recall ever using it anyways. But anyways, as I go back here to go heal up everyone, I think that's all we're gonna be doing for now. We made it through Mount Moon, we made it to Cerulean City, and we have a rival battle. Plus we had two Pokemon actually evolve. So that's gonna be for this part. If you like what I do, subscribe to my channel, consider supporting me on Patreon, and follow me on all my social media links. All that will be in the description. I'll see you all next time where we go and face off our second gym leader. I'll see you all then.